But our guest who's been having connection troubles has connected. A very warm welcome to former government minister, uh, Lord Andrew Robathan. Uh, good morning, uh, morning. Andrew. Um, morning. Uh, uh, I don't know if you were listening just then, uh, but uh, I I'm suggesting that this may be the worst week for the government so far. At one point uh, it was the Bibby Stockholm barge fiasco. While that was going on we learned that our total number of migrants since t uh, coming across the channel illegally since 2018 has topped the 100,000 mark and possibly even worse than that as we were uh, digesting that uh, undigestible information uh, unbeknownst to us a record number of 750 were coming on across the channel in 14 boats. It is an absolute shambles, isn't it? Uh, actually, I agree with you entirely. Um, however, I don't, on this occasion, and I do occasionally, but I don't blame the government for this. We have tried extraordinarily hard to stop this, and we are thwarted at every turn. I mean, I've sat through debates in the House of Lords where people are basically saying, well, no, we can't possibly do anything. Something has to be done, but we can't possibly do anything about this. Uh, we can't stop these poor people coming across. We know that there are people who are fleeing real <coughs> persecution, discrimination, etc., who actually deserve asylum. But most of these people just coming here for a better life. Who Absolutely. blames them? I don't blame them. Yeah. However, we should stop them. They should not be here. Yeah. Um, and, you know... <laughs> The way to solve th this problem, amongst other things, we must stop the pull factor, and you've already identified a lot of it. It's a really nice place to live here in the United Kingdom. <laughs> you wouldn't believe that if you listened to a lot of people saying what a ghastly, ghastly society we are. It's a really nice place to be. We're incredibly generous, and we are being taken for mugs by uh, other people, and particularly, I'm afraid to say, by lawyers who should know better and by opposition, Labour and Liberal Democrats who also should know better. I mean, I suppose under a generous system, uh, they 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 have a, a right to uh, legal aid. I'm I'm not entirely sure why, Andrew. I'm really not. I, I, I don't think they have a right to legal aid at all. I don't see why Good. they should have. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and um, and I'm afraid uh, it is lawyers. And let's just when you talk about legal aid, of course, the lawyers that are defending them are making money out of it. Mm. Just the same, actually. Well, not just the same, but it, in a not dissimilar way to the fact that people smugglers are making money out of it. It's, it's an industry. Yes. These, a lot of these lawyers are actually part of an industry. And I, 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 I mean, I don't know them individually. Uh, some of them, I'm sure, are very well motivated, but some of them are motivated by the fact they need to pay their mortgages. Yeah, yeah and let's not beat about the bush. Uh, we are giving uh, these migrants uh, legal aid, so people moan, quite rightly in my view, that we actually give them 45 quid a week benefits, we give them free food, free accommodation, almost for as long as they like, uh, but also uh, the untold story of this, we give almost each and every one of them thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds to pay for their immigration lawyers in legal aid, and those legal, uh, those lawyers right now, uh, you know, I don't mind saying this because they won't do anything about it because it's true. Uh, they are ma they're lying. They're lying. They're saying that these migrants, you know, who came across the Channel, who came across the Mediterranean, uh, they can't go onto the barge because they've they've got a great terror of water. It, the, the the absurdity of us giving these migrants thousands of pounds to pay for lawyers who make up lies about them. I mean, th th that is so mad on so many levels, isn't well, it? I, I, look, I think we are taken for fools. Uh, as somebody telling me that as thousands and thousands of people cross the channel from the United Kingdom to go on holiday in France, there's somebody telling me that France isn't a safe place to be. Of course, a safe place to be. They come in here to claim asylum. They should, should, under the Refugee Act, claim asylum in the first safe country. We know that. Yes. The whole thing is nonsense, and we are taken for fools. And I'm afraid that um, we are, as I said, the government is trying pretty hard, but is thwarted at every turn. And, you know, we got the um, illegal immigration bill, the illegal migration bill, through as an act at the end of uh, the session last month. But by God, it was difficult. It was the number of pathetic, pathetic, repetitive arguments we heard, particularly from the Liberal Democrats, who I think want an open open borders policy. Um, it was just awful. <laughs> and uh, and it was, it was filibustering. I'm sure you know what filibustering yes, is meant to be. Course, course. Filibustering is just stopping legislation getting through. And it was very, very trying. Now, the people of this country 
want this mig illegal migration. Actually, they want all migration uh, controlled properly, but they want the illegal migration stopped. It's illegal. It's against the law. Well, let's stop it. Uh, and personally, I just send people back, straight back. Absolutely. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I, I can't it's quite... It's more difficult to do than I say, but uh, it, it send is, them straight back. It is difficult. I turn the boats around in the middle of the channel and take them back to France. I can't imagine why uh, it's dangerous to take them back to France, but not dangerous to tow them into Britain. Uh, so that's another issue. But uh, we learnt, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Andrew, that uh, a third of the Cabinet are urging the Prime Minister to leave the <coughs> European Convention on Human Rights because, of course, the Court of Human Rights in Europe has ruled the Rwanda scheme uh, or certainly has held up the Rwanda scheme so far yeah. amid claims it's illegal. Uh, so uh, a third of Cabinet Ministers say to Rishi, uh, let's leave the ECHR, then we can be masters of our own destiny and we can start flying migrants to Rwanda. Aren't they right? Isn't it about time we um did this? Well, you may know the history of this, that after the Second World War, we were instrumental in setting up the European Convention on Human Rights, which was a good idea when there were millions and millions of people who'd been displaced by the Nazis and the Soviets uh, fleeing around Europe. I mean, it's a good idea. However, what has happened is it's become, it's been captured by um, the liberal left, if I put it that way. Uh, everybody's got rights now, rights which you weren't even dreamt of 80 years ago, <laughs> weren't even thought of. Um, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't know this. Um, and also, the, the big mistake was that in 1997, I think, or 1998, when the Blair government got in, we incorporated the ECHR into, into UK law and made the uh, made the decisions of the court just, justiciable in the UK, which they were not beforehand. Um, and I'm afraid I think we should disincorporate it from law. We can still remain signatories, but we don't have to pay attention. They're ridiculous. Um, uh, very often uh, un, uh, absurd, very often absurd rulings that the court comes out with. Why shouldn't we send people that wish to come here for asylum to a safe place to have asylum? As the Australians, of course, did, uh, they, they, when they had a similar problem, they deported people to uh, um, uh, islands offshore and then sent them back. And well, they, stopped, they stopped the illegal migration completely. Yeah, well, like on a cynical political level, uh, I've got a message for Mr Sunak. You start doing that and it's a vote winner. Uh, pe the people of this country <laughs> want the Rwanda scheme to start, uh, so let's get it started ASAP. I agree with you. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, Andrew. That was Lord Andrew Robathan.